Hey guys, welcome back to your girl Brittany and welcome to the first day of my seven days of BB's cheer. So kind of like how I did my Halloween, my Brittoline, now I'm on to the Christmas holiday season. I'm only doing seven days because I know we are busy, we got a lot going on and I just want to create some things that are quick and easy some last minute gift ideas some decor options so that's what we're gonna do so this first video if you remember i had made these earlier this year this is part of tiffany crafting like a boss mcgill she had did or she has started the hashtag 52 week projects where she posts a project every week for the 52 weeks to keep your crafting mojo going and um, this was week two, I believe, and I will have this posted down below, <clears throat> excuse me, her original tutorial. I'll have that down below in the description box for you so you can take a look at that. And so I was like, well, you know what? I have like this Valentine's version and then I have this happy fun one for like my craft area. I was like, you know what? Or I need a Christmas one so that's what we are going to do today with this one you can either do like a photo type ordeal or you can just do something like this where it's just like decorative and you can also even gift it to somebody let them know that you are thinking of them and so I'm gonna lean towards this style this time around with a fun like a saying in the back and just have it nicely decorated so that is what we're gonna do today so what we're going to need is a sheet of cardstock that measures 12 by 12. And on all four sides, we are going to do the scoring of 3 fourths, 1 and a half, two and a quarter and three and again we're going to do that on all four sides all right so now we have all four of our side scored and <clears throat> excuse me so now what we're gonna do is we are going to make a couple markings so only on your top and on your bottom you're gonna mark three and three fourths and you're gonna bring it down to your second score line only to your second score line and then you're gonna do that at eight and a quarter only to your second score line now we're gonna flip it so we have the ones we just marked that's gonna be at the bottom so now at the top and again we're gonna go three and three quarters down to that second score line so you have score line one two three four so just down oops down to your second score line and then again at eight and a quarter down to your second score line so that is all the scoring that we're going to do so now we're going to take our scissors <clears throat> I'm actually do this in pen first so that you can see so you have this score line right here right the one that you went all the way to your second score line what you're going to do is you're going to cut up that score see this pen's not going to work very well because of the type of paper i'm using it's the shiny kind shimmer so you can go up on your score line and then you're going to make a diagonal cut so from right here diagonally to this where the score lines intersect you're going to cut there then you're going to go up again to your score line and then you're going to remove 
this piece right here so this is what she looks like don't mind me i accidentally scored the wrong side <laughs> so um you're that is what you're going to do and you're going to do the same thing on this side and then when you flip it around you're going to do the same thing to those little um score lines as well so let me draw it again for you so we have this score line right so you see this box this box boxes over here boxes over here all right so we're gonna go up this score line then we're gonna hit diagonal so an angle cut right up to the intersecting score lines then we're gonna go up and then we're gonna cut this off so all these squares are gonna be cut and then half right here So looking at it, so we're going to go up our score line, then we're going to turn our scissor, turn our paper actually, like you're fuss cutting, we're going to go up to the corner where they intersect, and then we're going to go up, and then now I'm going to go over this side and remove all of these squares. So your buddy should look like that. Now it's a lot easier for me to flip it over this way to cut it because, you know, being right-handed. It'll probably be easier for you to see as well. So this score line right here, I'm going to cut up. Now I'm going to turn my paper. See that? Turn my paper and I'm going to cut angle up to the intersecting score lines. Now I'm going to turn my paper again. I'm going to cut up. And now I'm going to remove all these squares. Boom. So your friend should look like that. Do the exact same thing to the other side. Up. Over. Up. And then cut out. One more again. We're gonna go up, over, up, and then cut all these bad boys out. Ta da! So that part is done. I know, that was kind of stressful, huh? Ooh, child. All right. So now we can go ahead and varnish our score lines. <clears throat> now, though I have it going this way, I actually want my green to be on the outside. All right. So now we have all of our score lines varnished. First, before I um, do anything, what I'm going to do, um, before I start laying these down, what I'm going to do is I have this cut out. This is one of the full pages from the 6x6 six six pad of Miss Claus. Um, it came out last year at Michael's. It's one of their hot buys. And I'm actually going to have this be in my center. I am going to cut it down a little bit. This project is perfect for your 6x6 six six full page um, pages or even just using your 6x6 six six in general. Yes, you started off with a 12x12 12 12 sheet for your frame, but like decorating wise, this is perfect for your 6x6. Six six. So I'm actually going to cut this down so it doesn't overlap with my score lines. So I'm just going to cut an eighth of an inch off. Right. So now it'll be perfect within my score line. And I'm actually am going to adhere this down first. Now you don't have to do what I'm doing. 
if you want to form it first and then put like your matting piece or if you're using um, a 12 by 12 that is double sided then you don't have to worry about this but like I said if you want to form your frame first and then put whatever matting on the inside or um, you can go ahead and do that or like I said if you're using a 12 by 12 that's double sided then you won't have to worry about that me but like I said it's a great way to eliminate your six by sixes especially your full page ones all right so now what I'm gonna do I am going to prep um, my pages so you have one two three and four on the so I guess what you're looking at it is your top one. You're gonna add your adhesive. Well, I'm using double-sided tape. So if you're using wet glue, then you wanna do this um, part like one at a time. I'm deciding to use my double-sided tape. And then I'm gonna take my thinner double-sided tape. So this is an eighth of an inch. And I'm going to, where are you? <laughs> All right, so these little, oops, these little angle parts right here that we had cut, I'm going to adhere some tape right there. And you'll see why in a bit. I'm gonna do, oops, I'm gonna do that same thing on this other side. Great. All right, so what we're going to do is you're going to take your side portion, so the parts that you didn't cut all funky, you're going to be folding it in so it hits like this. So you see how I created a square? So when you fold it in, so folding it in, and you're creating that box, just like that. And so... First, I'm going to remove my score tape and I'm going to apply glue just to give me some wiggle room and putting it down nicely. So I'm going to go ahead and fold her over. Make sure I'm even on both sides. And then if you have like a pen or pencil or anything that you can slide in there. So then that way you can make sure that gets adhered down. And now I'm going to do the same thing to my other long strip. So I'm going to fold it over. Make sure that gets tucked in and then check my other side. Make sure that that's all evened out and then grab a pencil or something, smooth it down. All right, so now that part's over. These pieces that we had cut all funky, what's gonna happen is that they're gonna fold over and they're going to attach to these strips right here. So that's why I added the tape right here. So then that way it would be a lot easier for it to adhere down to. So I'm going to remove that and I'm going to remove this piece for my tape. I'm still going to add glue to my little inside parts where I had added my tape and as well right here. Now I'm gonna fold her over and I'm pushing these in so then that way they can shape properly and so you don't have a huge gap at the at these corners. Go ahead and fold her over. 
that's why I really suggest using kind of like that double sided tape and your glue. So see, now I'm holding it together and I'm pushing, kind of rubbing down like you know you're doing a scratch and sniff. So then they're rubbing it down. So then that way it really adheres onto there. And then flip it over and kind of rub that back part, make sure that that bottom piece had adhered. So it's not got a little undone. This part's the worst. Stay there. And if all else feels hot glue. Alright, so now I'm going to do the same thing to this side. And I'm going to fold her over. And make sure it's all tucked in there nicely. And see how perfect my words, like that full sheet, how perfect that fits in there. Now I'm just trying to hold everything together. And there is your frame. Now you can go ahead and zhuzh it up any way that you like it. So if you want to add a hanging element, um, if you want to decorate your edges again depends on if you use double-sided um, cardstock or not but this is how it comes out isn't that freaking adorable and now i'm just going to decorate her up a little bit and i'll show you the final results and here is my final look i just did something super simple i know right me simple but um i just i thought it was just so super cute i didn't want to take away from the words um i did add a border around and this is the paper from the same collection and then i added the red snowflakes these are the giant confetti you get from walmart i don't know if they have it this year i haven't looked but i did get it last year and i thought this would be perfect to put on my coffee bar so like don't get your tinsel in a tangle you know whole ordeal so i really hope that you guys go ahead and try this out i hope you enjoyed this craft with me type of deal but just make sure you tune in for the next six days because i have some awesome projects for you and so thank you so much guys make sure you give this video a like and if you haven't already subscribed go ahead and hit that button and i'll see you in the next video bye